So, uh, continuing this idea of um, linear and closed loop systems, looking at a natural system again, uh, what we really mean here is um, an ecosystem without human interference. So humans aren't coming in, taking things out and, and using them to make um, uh, various products. What we're talking about here is, is if there's no human interference. So we've had this uh, idea before of dead organic matter, DOM, and this would be things like um, twigs, and petals, fall off plants and leaves, um, fruit, uneaten fruit, and from animals things like feathers, um, feces you could even put in there, scales, claw, anything that can kind of fall off, um, or, or the actual dead animals and plants themselves. Now what happens is that these things would be broken down. What breaks them down? Well there's two things really. Um, I like this word, if I can spell it, uh, Detroit. Detritivores, there we go. Detritivores, which are, detritus means um, bits of bits of dead organic matter really. If the soil is made up of, of basically rocks and detritus, the remains of plants and animals. Detritivores are animals that um, would feed on all these kind of things. So you're looking at things like worms, um, small insects, beetles, and things like maggots. Okay. They take these large bits of um, dead organic matter and they break them down into um, smaller, there's a worm very happy that he's a detritivore. Worms don't really have faces like that, don't, don't put that on your exam. Um, but they can break these large pieces down. Now, once these bits have been broken down to much smaller bits, um, then we then get fungi and bacteria on decomposers coming to work. So fungi and bacteria. Bacteria, um, we'll come to in a second, but we'll mention fungi. They're, they're quite interesting in that um, what we tend to think of as a fungus is things like mushrooms, okay? In fact, the real fungus is usually underground. Well, it is underground. Um, and it's long, thin threads. You only get mushrooms at the very edge. Um, they're, they're there to kind of spread spores around. But real fungi is a filament, long and thin. So if you magnified one of those, here's a fungus that's called hyphae. Um, they're like long threads. You know, if you look at bread mold and you can see it's long and, and kind of furry, that, that's really what most fungus would look like. And what they do is they release enzymes. And they'd release that onto your food, for example, onto bread. But in, uh, in the environment, they'd be releasing onto all these things that fall down. The enzymes digest the food. They break down um, the tiny bits of dead leaves and stuff. And then the bacteria reabsorb them. Sorry, the bacteria. The fungi reabsorbs it. And this is called extracellular digestion. Why extracellular? Because instead of it taking the food in and digesting inside, it released an enzyme, digested it outside, and then reabsorbed it. Okay, so that's what a fungi does. Uh, the bacteria said I'd come to, uh, one specific example to be aware of is nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen is needed to make uh, proteins. So it also makes, oh God, page, sorry. Nitrogen is needed to make proteins, uh, amino acids, which of course proteins are made up of. And this is one of the, the substances that is recycling the environment. Now there's a couple of ways that the cycle happens. If you remember it from B3, uh, but I'm just gonna summarize it here. So nitrogen that's in the air, there's nitrogen gas, can be taken up by um, bacteria that live in the soil. It's called nitrogen fixing, nitrogen fixing bacteria. And that makes substance called nitrates. And nitrates can be absorbed by plants, okay? Um, other things from petals and twigs, blah, blah, blah. Any proteins that are in there, and there'll be proteins in dead animals, can be taken up by um, other bacteria and turned into something called ammonium. Okay, which if you want to know what it is, chemically, it's NH4 with a plus, it's an ion. And yet more bacteria can turn that into nitrates. So the proteins have got another pathway using two different types of bacteria that turn into nitrates. This is also where things like urine, which actually contains a lot of nitrogen, that's how it gets turned into nitrates. And of course, because it's a cycle, we also have to have the other side. There are bacteria that can turn nitrates back into nitrogen gas. 
Okay, if you're wondering where this bit comes in the cycle, if nitrates end up in plants, they get made into proteins, and there we go. So we've got a little bit of a cycle going around. Um, these kind of bacteria, it's worth mentioning. Um, these ones are called nitrifying bacteria. They tend to live in waterlogged soil. So things like swamps, really muddy places and bogs. That's where you tend to get, oops, denitrifying bacteria. Um, completing the cycle. 